Alright, I'm going to walk you through the steps of recording without computers. Now, um, I know a lot of people like, like to use computers, and that's cool or whatever, but uh, I don't. So, uh, instead I use a uh, Task on Porta Studio DP32, and uh, I think that's the, the right way to go. Now, I'm not completely stupid. I know there is a computer inside of it, but it's, that's what it, it's all it does is record music, so it's not... Uh, like a normal computer, and you ain't gotta, you can pretend like it's not a, a fucking computer in there and just use it like it's a fucking VCR or some kind of shit like that. Or just a tape recorder or something to that extent, like a good old four track you used to use. Um, but any kind of, any kind of digital, it's like I say, it's still digital quality. Um, any kind of multi track recorder, maybe by Zoom or somebody like that, that you want to use, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so what you're gonna do first. And more, I'm guessing you're probably going to be doing something in vaguely rock. Is you want to record uh, a rhythm guitar track just to, to get everything started. So you want to find the uh, what tempo it's going to be because you're more than likely going to use a metronome. <laughs> uh, because if you're going to record drums and stuff like that, and you're not just going to record everybody play it at once, which could be an option, you just may need to use more of a mix or something, and probably not, uh, then. You're going to be recording things a piece at a time, so you're going to have to record the rhythm guitar with a metronome so that the drummer can play. Because if you think you're just going to play rhythm guitar and then it be in time enough for a drummer to come back and play, I, I just that's not realistic unless you're using a metronome. So you're going to find what tempo works. Uh, I think that um, once you go up and down, <clears throat> it's a good idea to turn turn the metronome off and then just maybe kind of do something for a second to kind of forget about it and then play your part again especially singing with it if it's a part that you sing with and get the speed without the metronome and then go check with the metronome don't let them sometimes you might get a little faster or slower but it's good to just kind of stop and then you know turn the metronome off and make sure you get the right tempo going so then you're going to go and you're going to record rhythm guitar I would even advise at this point that you don't try to get a great sound because you really don't want to tempt yourself to later want to use that rhythm track. You really are going to do better if this is one that you don't uh, keep on the final recording. And the reason I say that is because you're going to want to redo any rhythm after you have the drums recorded so that it sits in there right. Because you're going to, no matter how good you're playing with the metronome, after you are super in time it, it can work but just in general especially if, when you're starting out if you haven't done this before you're probably not going to want to use that rhythm track but you're going to need it so the drummer has something to play with so you're going to you know play through the song uh, i would you can still punch in most of these probably all of these recorders have the function where you can say okay i want it to you know, maybe you play through and you messed up at a certain point so you just kind of set a point before where you messed up and you tell the recorder, okay, that's where we're going to start recording. Then it'll go back and it'll play several seconds before. You can probably set how long it plays. And so you can kind of hear the music and then join back in and it'll start recording. And so they call it punching in or punching out or whatever so you can fix your mistakes like that. So you get a rhythm track from the beginning of the song all the way to the end recorded. Uh, record some singing on there. Now, uh, something to keep in mind. When you're thinking about how in time, <laughs> let's just be real, realistic here, how in time do you have to be for it to work out where a drummer can come back? And I would say the absolute, like, and this is, you want much better than what I'm about to say, but this is at, where you can't go past this point. If you get to where you have reset the beat, so to speak, as far as, um, like you doing your riff is da 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 da. You know, just let's get real simple. And so your metronome's going two two three four one two three four. Every time you start your riff over, it needs to be at that that one on the metronome. If you get it to where you've messed up, you play too slow, you play too fast, and you are now on the wrong beat. That's when it's going to be completely impossible for a drummer to come and do it. You know. And, for it to sound like anything. As long as you stay on the right beat, even if you're going a little bit too fast and slow, you know, getting a little off, uh, that's not going to be as bad. And once again, you want it to be as time with the metronome as you can possibly get the rhythm guitar. But that's, I'm just telling you, that is where once you've skipped the beat, then the drummer's going, what's he supposed to do? 
he's going to go back and you're going to be off at some point. How long does it take you to get off? So that is the absolute bare minimum. You want to do better than that and keep it as in time as possible. But just you, if you do that, you you got to redo it. So like basically what I'm telling you is once you have recorded it and you go back and listen to it, you need to listen with the metronome to make sure that you didn't skip the beat, that you stayed in time. Now most, maybe, you know, that's not an issue for anybody. If you've never played with a metronome, it may be or whatever when you're first starting out. But just so uh, we establish that. Now, once you've got it uh, in time enough that you haven't skipped the beat and you've recorded your vocals on there. Now, these are probably just going to be replacement vocals, even though I'm the worst about leaving them there because I was authentic, leave the mistakes in. I won't give in to Pro Tools, you know, um, but realistically, you're probably going to want to redo those vocals after you got everything else going or whatever. But you at least want them in there so that you have rhythm guitar and vocals so that when the drummer goes to record with that, he knows where the song is at. Now, if you are, if the drummer is the one that has written the song and you can literally just play through the entire song without guitar and vocals, I mean, I guess that's fine, but to me it seems like it would still be worth doing the uh, guitar and vocals first because even if you can imagine the entire song in your head, while you're playing drums, you still have to be lined up to the metronome. Uh, I guess, I guess unless you're a drummer that you're just going for it that hard, you're not even going to use a metronome. Which if, if that's, so be it. Like I say, I'm, <laughs> I'm not that much of a drummer to even really think about doing it that way. But those might be some options. But more likely, it might be better to go ahead and have a rhythm guitar and vocal. So then you're just, you're making sure that you're, uh, you know, on the metronome or whatever so that uh, you can go back and re-record your uh, rhythm guitar and stuff. So if you already have the vocals and uh, rhythm guitar, at least you don't have to think about that. Then it's just a matter of, you know, staying in time and so that you can get it all to fit together. So then, of course, go back. Um, now, you might be wondering, what about bass? Uh, well, whether or not you record bass or rhythm guitar probably depends on just how your band is set up. If, if I'm going to record the bass myself, in my case, then I'm probably going to go ahead and do rhythm guitar first, and then because the bass is going to either be mirroring closely to what the guitar is doing or in the parts where it's doing something different. Point being, if you're maybe in like a power trio and a lot of what the guitar player is actually really playing along with the bass, you got kind of more of a dynamic thing. Maybe maybe the bass player is a case where he is only really playing with the drummer and the guitar is kind of floating on top. And like I say, there might be reasons why you would do bass first. I don't know that it really, uh, like I say, just kind of depends on your situation. Uh, after you, you know, record your rhythm guitar and then your bass whenever you're going to do it, maybe then you go back and either do guitar solos or go back and finish your vocals. When you do your vocals, you can um, either... Uh, what I tend to do if I'm really going to put enough time in it because I'm, you know, not doing it. You got to be off in it. It's like, you know, it's great to just go record the vocals all the way through and uh, in one take and just be that, that cool. Uh, odds are you might want to go change things. So typically what I would do is just record the song all the way through and go back and fix individual lines, fix individual verses, maybe go back and fix that chorus. Or sometimes I might even do it where I sing it, and as soon as I know I've messed up, I just kind of go back. Because the thing about it is, uh, although you can punch in, um, and, and you can actually in those recorders punch in pretty, you know, record, go back to fix something uh, pretty easily. With vocals, it's super easy. Unless you're just trying to fix a word inside of, you know, like, because you're probably going to be fixing an entire line at least, so then you have to breathe. Unlike playing guitar, <laughs> you know, which you probably ought to stop, but I don't like that. You keep going. That's, um, so it's easy to, to punch in and out and not have it be a difficult. Like So me personally, what I tend to do is on bass, when I'm recording bass, I'll punch in and out as much as I want to because it don't really seem to ever become a problem. Rhythm guitar, I'd love to record the entire rhythm track um, as one take. And I, I usually do that. I can't say that I always do that because um, I, I think there are a few exceptions. But in general, that's pretty much what, um, because I'm usually going to get it close enough for, for me for rhythm guitar uh, going through. And if, in fact, in some cases, I have used the original 
recordings um, before I had drums. And that was usually more in the case where either A, I was going for uh, a rough sound, uh, like kind of greatest slits, or B, where it was by the time that I'd been playing with the metronome enough to record that I'd gotten fairly in time and was had a drummer that was really good drummer. So it ended up kind of working well enough that I just, you know, let, you know, left it there. Um, but in general, you know, you could totally, and I, like I said, I think I have, with your rhythm guitar, find places. Because it's best to, to punch in and out in a place where there's silence. So if you actually stop playing for a second, that's the best place because then you don't have to worry about it cutting off anything in a weird way. Because if you try to cut off, like say your guitar is still ringing out and you try to cut in right there, it's going to kind of sound weird when it just cuts out or, you know, cuts in or whatever it is you're doing. So you're kind of looking for good places. Now, me personally, uh, I don't ever, and I don't think I have ever in anything that I've released, uh, ever cut into a lead part. And that's partially just because of the way I play and what I like to hear as far as from my playing. I want it to be crazy and I want it to be wild and uh, I, <laughs> I'm not really sure where I'd be chopping in the middle of any of that shit. To, you know, which part was the mistake? How do you, how you separate the mistakes from the... It's all mistakes, you know, so... Um, now, after that, uh, after you've recorded all your parts, uh, and, you know, and we could go into detail some other time about what kind of microphones or how you want to set it up, because there's a million ways you can do it, and I don't even, nobody knows all the ways. Uh, I don't know, that's just some bullshit. I'm just but anyway, um, once you have all your tracks recorded, you're going to mix it down by setting the volume levels of the tracks, but also where they are in the stereo spectrum. I try to spread things out. Uh, I definitely am not a master at doing any of that. And uh, I usually don't do very much in the way, or if anything at all, of equalization. But my understanding is you would usually want to do it more to uh, kind of reduce noise and make everything fit together and sound cleaner versus just really change how each one sounds. In general, uh, if you can get a good sound when you're recording then you don't you so you don't have to go back and do eq so that's the that's the what i do i try to just check when i'm recording it that's a halfway decent sound or good enough and then that way it's just it is what it is so that's why my shit sounds like a mess because i never do the eq and stuff after that um then you have like a mastering where like one thing i do is i do this normalizing thing which takes whatever the loudest part of the song was and makes it as loud as it could be and then everything else just goes down from there because sometimes some of my tracks by the time i end up recording them i didn't set the volumes right and so we end up recording it kind of quiet so that way if you listen to all the songs in a row you don't have super loud super quiet super loud on accident but they're all kind of um a more natural volume or whatever so at least uh matches up better um so, you don't, no auto-tune, no pitch correction, no rhythm correction, it is what it is, but you get to do it as many times as you want. I don't usually take advantage of that to its fullest because I like it to, I like to leave some mistakes because I bitch about that when stuff sounds too perfect, so I feel like I gotta walk the walk, and I've definitely left some fucking bad mistakes and shit that I released that I easily could have went back and fixed. So, don't listen to my music and say, oh, it's got to sound like shit if you record at home. No, it's just, I, I, I guess, to a certain extent, I was going to, you know, you'll, I was just going to let some shit out there. Let, you know, let some mistakes fly, but you can definitely go back and fix mistakes and redo things as many times as you want. It's just that, unlike computers, you can't go and use a computer to just go and fix the pitch or whatever. You actually have to sing it good at least once. Um, so, I hope that this has helped. Uh, if you have questions, I'll do videos on any other topics related and tell you what I do know, uh, what little that it may be, because I, I like when people record music and do it kind of a little bit more old-fashioned way, even though it's digital. I think it's cool for people to still actually play the shit. I, computer music is great and all, but real, more traditional recorded stuff is also pretty cool, too. So, uh... Have fun recording.
Mom is going backward to a life without her care. She tries to find a memory, but it wasn't there. Maybe it's something I don't know, maybe I don't care. Maybe it's something you should have grown, maybe you should share. 